be really gross. But when you notice that the, the muscle fibers and the tissues here, pay careful attention. The tissue here is very feather-like, but the, this here is um, different. I would say almost kind of gristly-like. It's just a different kind of tissue. It's not the same tissue as the muscle that surround the limbs. It just is what it is. It's science. It's anatomy. So uh, back to um, lip buzzing. Now there's a lot more stuff that you can do to increase the strength of your lips. Um, also just a caveat that building lip strength is not really a do-it-yourselfer. People tend to find themselves in more trouble and plain worse um, if they don't have the help of someone who actually has been there and done it and um, over and over and knows what they're doing. The simple reason is because um, it's kind of a stealth technique and so you can do it and feel great and after a couple of days you just shot yourself in the foot. You feel like you can't play, you can't get a buzz out. Chances are you were probably lip buzzing in the car or lip buzzing doing something, you weren't paying attention to the time or you're buzzing way too loud. Some people have this logic, there is a logic to it, if I can buzz loud and buzz high that's just going to make me that much better of a player, right? Wrong. If you buzz too loud and too long, you're just going to actually screw yourself up. You're going to numb all this in here and make it too stiff and it's just not going to vibrate. As a result, your range is going to drop down lower. So, um, getting back into lip buzzing, um, you can do a couple of different things. You can do scales and arpeggios, um, target different notes. I have a whole system that I use for lip buzzing in the um, upper register program, in the brass upper register program. And by the way, this is for all uh, brass players. If you have to buzz your lips into a mouthpiece, regardless of what instrument that you play, this technique is viable for you. And the thing is, it's not just about going up, it's also about going down low. So, if I were to start on a concert B-flat, buzz my lips, I would hope to be able to get down several octaves nice and relaxed. That was actually a triple pedal C lip buzz. And uh, when you get down there, um, I don't call it a true lip buzz because if you notice what, what's happening is you have a lip buzz combo lip flap or lip flutter. But still, if you can make that um, triple pedal C or triple pedal B flat come out like that, That would be an octave higher on the double. Um, you have to have some degree of flexibility to be able to do that. Another one would be to do what singers do. You know, when you hear singers go, ah, and they go down low, you can kind of do that on your lips. Hear that? Just kind of wean all the way down the pedal C, double pedal C, and then all the way down to triple pedal C. You have to have some degree of lip flexibility and lip sensitivity in this part, not just talking about here. We're not really working anything here. This is now all about the lips. This could be nice and pliable and, and flexible, and strong. If your lips are screwed and they're too tight, they're too brittle, you're not going to be able to do what I just did. So you might want to try that. And um, by the way, that's a culmination of a lot of years of working on lip buzzing. And so um, you might, if you find yourself not being able to do that, um, you can get with somebody or you can get with me. Um, I tend to do a lot of um, lip buzzing techniques that will allow you to really maximize your potential. So you got to be able to go down. you got to be able to go up. I'm not playing this loudly or buzzing loudly. Just an easy, easy lip buzz. Let me see if I can get a little bit higher. Okay, got a little chunk of the um, the double C there. 
So, think about it. If you're causing your lips to vibrate that fast, there is some lip tension. Um, it has to be there, right? Well, let me show you what happens when there's no lip tension because I've noticed there's, there's a lot of um, professionals out there uh, also teaching. They're trying to say, use no lip tension. Here's no lip tension, okay? Get it? So when you hear people saying, no, don't use any lip tension, that's no lip tension. You have to have some degree of lip tension. What they probably really mean is, don't use too much tension. And that's kind of ambiguous, right? So just so you know, when you hear people say, well, you, you know, you shouldn't have any lip tension at all when you're playing. It should be totally relaxed, totally effortless. No, because if you have no lip tension, it's this. There's no lip tension there. You're not going to get anything except for maybe some double pedal, uh, pedal tones to come out. A little bit of tension. A little bit more. Just a little bit. And then let's see if I can get the next one to come out. There we go. That was a, um, quite a lot of attention, or a lot of tension to get that note um, to compress out. That was a double C on my lips. So, I hope this little talk about lip strength and um, corners. And we know the corners again. I mean, most people know about the embouchure and the corners because, you know, that's all you've ever heard about.